Hello everyone. So today we'll continue with deep generative modeling and we'll move to the next class of generative models, namely implicit models. So a quick recap from the last lecture. So we divide generative models into autoregressive models like pixel CNN, flow-based models like real MVP or GLOW and latent variable models when we have uh, additional uh, latent lower dimensional uh, representation. And here we distinguish uh, implicit models and prescribed models. And prescribed models we talked uh, about last time, uh, for instance, probabilistic PCA or VAE, where we explicitly say what is the distribution of uh, the decoder, the prior, and so on, and an encoder. Uh, the, the, the general overview of these uh, models or classes of models. Uh, so we see that last time we talked about these prescribed models. So they are good at training. Training is stable. We can approximate likelihood. We can quickly uh, sample from these models and we can also use them for compression. However, if we want to have uh, something like you know less uh, problems with defining what kind of distribution we need to to use and so on we can turn into implicit models so the training unfortunately is unstable so this is the problem likelihood cannot be uh, estimated or calculated but they're very fast for training for sampling pardon uh, and they provide really high quality of uh, images or some generated uh, objects. And first, before we, uh, we, we turn into real implicit models, we will talk about density networks as, a, as an introduction to, to implicit models. So again, we, we have in mind this generative process uh, in latent variable models. So we have some low dimensional Z latent representation and we have higher dimensional X and we first sample in the high dim low dimensional space and then we uh, decode it or generate a high dimensional object like for instance images of horses and our objective was the log likelihood function where uh, inside the log we have to calculate integral with respect to uh, low dimensional z's and of course we can uh, we can evaluate it, we can estimate it, sorry, uh, or approximate it using uh, Mark Monte Carlo samples, right? So what does it mean? It means that we can sample from uh, P of Z multiple, multiple, multiple times, S times, uh, and then we uh, approximate the integral with this finite uh, uh, Zs. Here we, we use uh, already the uh, log sum exp uh, trick so namely that we uh, that we uh, turn this uh, p of x we calculate logarithm and then we take exponent so so it gives us what we need and uh, if we take standard gaussian prior of course then we need only to model p of x given z right however this is still likelihood based approach still prescribed uh, approach but uh, we will see why we start with that later on so all right so we consider now uh, the input z to our model then we want to somehow transform this low dimensional uh, object the low dimensional z and we want to generate high dimensional x so we need to have some kind of function f that will transform z to x and of course if we want to have a powerful model so it means flexible model so we need to have some powerful transformation F. And what we can use here, and of course, ladies and gentlemen, this is not a surprise. We can use neural networks, right? They are very flexible, uh, powerful transformations that we can you know, build uh, and expand and so on. So as uh, of course, this is the first choice, especially in the course of surprise, surprise, deep learning. Uh, so, uh, actually, actually, that's it, right? So what we what we can take, we can take a neural network that will transform z to x, and what it what it needs to do, similarly to a decoder in VAEs, it will output uh, parameters of a distribution for x's, for instance, mixture of Gaussians or 
Bernoulli's or something like that, right? So, so this function will, this neural network will give us the parameters of a distribution, right? And this was the idea of density networks and uh, it was published over 20 years ago. It's even hard to believe, but uh, it, it was really uh, a big, uh, big idea, but because back then it was not so popular. So it wasn't so, uh, you know, something like sexy paper that everyone was uh, interested in that. Uh, however, from our perspective now, we must say that it was pretty visionary and David Mackay, uh, so together with Gibbs, uh, they, they, they published it in 1999. Uh, and uh, what is the, the general picture? So we have our log likelihood function as the objective. We know how to approximate it. We take uh, a flexible model, namely uh, uh, neural network. And we, we just sample training procedures, very simple. We just sample a lot of these from the prior, for instance, standard Gaussian. Then we apply log, log sum X trig and we uh, calculate uh, uh, weights of, of, the, of the, the decoder or generator using backpropagation, right? It seems to be very simple and uh, in fact it is. So the, the question of course is uh, why people don't use it, right? Because the drawback of this approach is that it scales very badly in high dimensional cases. And why? We can see already that if this integral here it's high dimensional, so we have multiple dimensions. So we, we encounter one of the basic problems in machine learning. So normally in a classroom, I would ask you now, what is the problem? So I give you two seconds to think about it. And the answer is curse of the dimensionality, right? In order to cover properly the whole space, we would need to sample a lot of points. And that's the problem. So uh, it works really well for low dimensional problems. You can play with that, you can check it out. Uh, I highly encourage you to do that. In general, uh, it is really nice model because it's nonlinear. So compared to, you know, probabilistic PCA, so we have nonlinear transformations. It allows to easily generate something. So once we have a model, we can easily generate whatever we want, uh, but uh, it, it's not analytical, of course, no exact likelihood because we must approximate it. It requires a lot of samples from the prior and that's why it fails in high dimensional problems. And also it requires some explicit distributions. So again, we, we are not so maybe flexible, right? We need to upfront, we need to decide what we want to do. So, uh, you can ask, of course, why we talk about it, because now we will ask a very uh, important question. So can we do better, right? Can we do something better than, than, than the 